Welcome to Anderson Silva's boxing coach, Marco Morales, here to the program. Um, obviously, Anderson's getting ready to fight Uriah Hall, UFC 198. Uh, Marco, right now, is still in, you're still in California, right? Yeah. Still okay, California. and Anderson's down in Brazil already. He already went down yeah, to train. Yeah, okay. last week. Um, you, uh, for those who don't know, uh, long-term, exceptionally good stuntman. Um, you've probably seen him, TV, film, you've seen him everywhere. You just don't know it's him because that's the option. <laughs> that's the game of the stunt guy that I'm learning that you got to keep your head out of the way. Uh, uh, show your face only when you have to. The rest of the time, you're ducking exactly. so you can use you again. You got it, but thanks, man. Yes. What's the most? What's the most you've ever died in one one episode or one film? You know what, man? I worked on TV on Sons of Anarchy, mm-hmm. and I must have died. I, I worked maybe ten, twelve episodes. I must have died all of them. All twelve. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> it's yeah, awesome. It's just, you know the art of dying, baby. We got to master it. We we know how to fall well. We take a good we take exactly. a good hit. <laughs> That's it, man. There's um. There are certain looks that that uh, that we have, you know, in entertainment. We just we look like the bad guy. We look like obviously you you get more Mexican and Latin American. I get more Chechnyan and Russian and Eastern European. It's just because the look we have. There's nothing. It has nothing to do with your national background. It has nothing to do with who you really are. Is it what do you look like? And that's just what it is. Hey, exactly. It's what you can sell on TV. I mean, I I played Armenian before. Yeah. Russian oh yeah. You pulled stuff. it. Okay. I can see it. I can see it. And yeah. then. uh one of Uriah Hall's trainers, Arnold Chun, is another stud guy who in uh, right. Olympus Olympus has fallen, died like 16 times. He's one of the Koreans. He kept dying. So it's just yeah, like that's, that's just the game that goes on. So yeah. you have a, a weird, interesting juggling problem where most boxing coaches are trying to juggle other athletes within their, their stable. You're having to juggle, I have a stunt career, plus I'm helping Anderson run his gym, plus I'm Anderson's boxing coach. So how does that work on a, on a, on a really, a real tough, you know, like you're busy doing stunts kind of time. Cause a lot of times you're not where stunts just aren't there and you're, you just have to worry about boxing. But when you like have stunts too, how do you get the time in with Anderson? It's funny, man. I, it's, it's, it's worked so well since I started working with, with Anderson, I started working with him, uh, since the first, uh, uh Chris Whiteman fight. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, stunt guys ask me all the time, hey, dude, how are you doing, man? You lose work? Or was it, man, I, I have not been able to lose work. And I've been there for, you know, from that fight and on to train Anderson. It's, it's, it's just, actually, I guess it's in the universe. It's, it's worked perfect. That, that's, that's one of the rarities because usually it's a scheduling problem. You're like, damn it, I got this movie, but shoot, I'm already in London. Like, what do I do now? But you're not having those issues. So that's good. No, that's, that's a blessing, man. That's a blessing. And then Anderson's also very understanding. He understands what I'm doing. You know, he, you know, he, he, you know, in MMA, there's a bunch of coaches and that's just one. So, right. you know, there is that flexibility, you know what I mean? Good. Go for Good. a couple of days, come back, you know, on, on training camp, you know, for the Nick Diaz fight, I was in, 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 in Chicago for three weeks coordinating a, an episode of a show mm-hmm. over there. And, and he was right in the middle of the, of the camp and I came back and right in the middle of it and finished it, you know? Yeah, just, I mean, and that's how the scheduling goes sometimes. So, yeah. obviously with Diaz, uh, he gets hit for um, PEDs. He gets a year suspension. He comes back. You're with him the whole year uh, as he's going through the whole trial and process. How is his mental attitude going through that whole trial and process? Like, it was, it was, it has to be taxing. I mean, it has to be hard on him. And then he wants to come in and hit mitts and move a little bit. And you're, like, trying to keep him mentally acute to it as well, trying to learn new techniques while he's dealing with this outside problem. So how was it for you as the coach trying to get him through that year that year suspension before the Bisping fight? You know, it, it's it, it, Anderson has this. He's very good in, in separating uh, one thing with the other. It's you know I, I, when that happens, man, Anderson's probably gonna not train well. He's probably gonna I don't know stop training for a little bit. But Anderson, he didn't train as much, but he would always be in the gym and he would always train. Marco, let's train, train, train. And, and, you know, he was able to manage it pretty well, you know, once he, but yeah, he couldn't wait to, to the yeah. whole thing over, you know, for the whole thing to be over. He just couldn't wait for it, but he managed it pretty well, man. Be honest. How was training camp getting ready for the Bisbing fight? Getting, getting ready for it. We saw the photos, we saw the social networking posts, but those things, you know, can be staged and, and put on a side. Yeah, how correct. was it really getting ready? You know what? It, that was a really, really good camp. Uh, I, okay. I wouldn't. Yeah, it was a good camp. Anderson was always there. The training was well. The sparring was well. It, I mean, 
the training camp went perfect. It was a good camp, and I was there through the whole camp, from day first, from he got the call to 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 get mark the fight to the end. Yeah, I, I, obviously, I, I follow you on on social networking, so I saw when you were in London, I saw your post, and, and you know, you actually getting some uh, what I call the coach's privilege. I got to travel over here. I'm gonna take a little time while, while my athlete is resting and sleeping. Yes. I'm gonna go see stuff. I'm gonna actually go go oh, do yeah. stuff. And and you seem to have a great time. Was it fun over there? Did you have a good time? Yeah, man. I've, I've never I've never been to Europe, and 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 being able to get that time to get out and and explore. It's it's a big big plus, man. You know, it wasn't just work work work. You know, we we did our work in the morning, do, do his training. He went to get his rest and his nutrition. We were out, man, and 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 playing the town, which is, it was great, man. Love London. London okay. was great. So you, everything's good coming up to let's let's get through the day of the fight. It's you're backstage, you're warming up, you're getting ready for the for the call out. Um, how was the warm up for Anderson backstage? The the warm up was pretty good. It, 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 this fight was very. We're very technical about this fight. Anderson, mm -hmm. actually, the whole team had a certain things that we wanted to do in the cage as far as striking. And and fortunately, everything, you know, that we worked on landed, you know, as far as the knee, there's push kicks, and, you know, everything was well. The warm-up was pretty good, actually. And okay. he was focused on getting into the, into the cage, man. Now we get in there, we get through the fight. Obviously, it's a it's a five-round um, five round, uh Unanimous decision for Bisbing. Um, if the fight was seven rounds, you know, Anderson was coming on the fifth round. He's like pushing himself. I'm not in his training camp just for this is clarity for the folks at home. I've never, never been uh, around Marco when he's, when he's training in the training camp. I've never been to Anderson's training camp. I've never trained with Anderson. So I'm just a fan watching on the outside. It looked like Anderson from, from the first 45 seconds on, he was conserving energy. Like he, he was trying to do things that were going to do a large amount of impact without having to use much energy at all. As a result, it kind of, his volume was lower than normal. His, his punch, punch kick volume was way lower than normal. And that gave Bisbing the opportunity to come through and steal the first round. And really, I, I can't remember now, and forgive me folks at home, for it was the second or third round, it was like the controversial run where, where uh, uh, third round, right? Where, where Anderson drops him with the knee. They, you know, is that right? Right, right the end of third round. I mm -hmm. actually had Bisbing winning one, two, and winning three, even though he got hit by the knee. This is just me now. Uh, uh, sure, he, sure. I had him winning one, two, and three. And, and he still wins three, even though he got cracked by that knee at the end. The judges there gave Anderson the third round um, because of the knee and, and the drop. Uh, makes and, But still at this point, coming, into the, coming up through, like in between the second and third round, were you guys saying in the in, the, in between, like, hey, we got to step up a volume, we got to step up the push, because it looked like he was being slow. Most definitely. See, and you're a referee, man. You you understand the the, the scoring system, and <clears throat> you know Anderson, as you all as you know, he has his own way of yeah. controlding the cage. You understand what I'm saying? And then he's, you know, for the majority of the time, he's been success, successful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right at the right when that whole mess happened. You know, we kept telling Anderson he has to push, he has to push, he has to push. Um, he has to he has to finish the fight. You know, we were wondering, you know, what's going on. You know, you could say maybe his, 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 the fact that the ring, I mean, the case rust, he hasn't been fighting okay. as he usually is. Um, okay. It could, it could be his leg, you know. And it's, it's, I, I don't, I, you know, it's something that I always ask, but Anderson's one of those guys that he would always say no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, he, he you know, it is, it, we kept telling him to keep going and pushing for, uh, giving pressure. You know what I mean? So obviously now, um, fight's over. The announcement's made. You guys have lost. It, it's been, you know, what, a, a couple months now, right? Since, or a month, whatever, since, since the, the thing. You've had some time to stop. And of course, emotions are high. So, I was going to say stuff and do things and, you know, saying, you know, we were robbed and that whole bit. Like, I, like I get it. Um, now you've had some time to think about it. Uh, I'm not sure if you've even had time to relook at the fight again to kind of analyze it for, for Anderson and stuff. But how <clears> is <throat> Anderson now? He gets a new call. He's fighting in Brazil. He's fighting at home, essentially. Um, he's going to fight uh, Uriah Hall, another another good striker, but a striker that he can beat if, if he steps his game up. Um, has the ring rust been shaken off, do you think, now? Good question. So, the, yeah, so that's the thing. 
you know, yeah, at the end of the fight, we, we all analyze the fight. You know, we, you know, apart from all the rules and all the stuff, what happened on that third round, the time that um, it took uh, Herb Dean to actually start the fourth round was over a minute and 20 plus seconds. And there was a lot of things and maybe, you know, I, I still don't understand why that happened. You know what I mean? Um, it's, we could go on and on talking yeah. about it. Um, you know, in other fights, you would see this happen. And my guy jumps, lands that knee. There goes the ref, jumps in, stops the fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. I I don't know if if I, when Anderson saw her step forward, he probably said, "Well, he's going to stop," and he started celebrating. Maybe her being thin liked the fact that Anderson, you know, went ahead without him saying, you know, waving his hands or whatever. The fight's over. So celebrate. Um, you know, he kept calling her um, Bisping to get up, get up, get up, get up. And I guess Bisping wasn't responsive. You know, I think that's another, I mean, another referee would have stopped that if you're a fighter, if you're trying to get, come back and get up and, you know. Fight. Well, in, in, Herb's def in Herb's defense, uh, I actually interviewed Herb about it right after because I wanted to know. And, and, and refs, obviously, like you said earlier, I ref. So I see things that people yeah. on the camera can't even catch it. That he said that Bisping was both eyes were looking right at him. He's, he put his hands up to defend himself. And if Anderson had hit him two more times, Herb was like, "I would have stepped right in and stopped it." But because he walked away, that I was like, "Okay, what do I do? Um, I, I have to continue the fight." The bell rang. The round's over. Now what? It's like, okay, well now I gotta, I gotta, we have to keep going. He's telling Michael to get up, get up, get up, because the fight's not over. The fight's not over. And Michael, it, it, he thinks, in, in my opinion, is. Everyone kind of thought the the fight was over. Everyone except for Herb. And once he explained to the corners, it's like now we got to get back into it. Like this fight is not over. The bell rang. Not me waving it off. Let's get to it. So Michael was kind of like, "Why do I have to get up right now?" You know, he's celebrating in the corner like we're done. You know, he's like, "No, no, no, fight's not over. Let's go." Once Mike realized that, he was like, he bounced right up and got ready to go. And then of course had to had to uh, uh, take care of the leakage. So ring right. rust is gone. So and I, and, and, go ahead. Rust is gone. So now, so, now the, the fight's yeah, over. We're, we're now finished. that we went through that debate, right? Yeah. We went through that debate. You know, we could go over, I mean, on and on about it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And, if you, and if you want me to take Anderson Silva's side, I can argue that side as well. Like, it does, it does, it's, right. so, it's right. so close. Just argue both yeah. sides. It's so easy, you know, to, to be on either, right. either corner of it. So fight's over. Um, he's at home. He's resting. He, you know, obviously uh, uh, Bisping is, is healing up his stitches. Uh, Anderson is, is healing up a couple of bruises, gets a phone call. Hey, we want you to fight uh, uh, Uriah Hall. Um, ring rust is gone. And, and side note, I get yelled at a lot from a lot of athletes. They're like, what about ring rust? Because you haven't been in the, in the ring in nine months. Well, I don't believe in ring rust. It doesn't exist. It does exist. Stop it. You, you, come on, man. You, who, you, yeah. you, you can't sell that to me. Don't try to sell it to my fans. Like That's just stupid. Like Ring rust exists. If you, haven't, if you don't do something for a while, it falls apart. So It's, it's, it's just nature, man. Uh, you know, if you're not around it, if you haven't done it, you know, you lose timing, you lose footwork, you lose just the part, the fact to be there. It becomes yeah. maybe unfamiliar territory. Yeah, it's just part of it. But, you know, at the end of the fight, we came to LA and, and you know, Anderson's like, I, 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 in his heart, he won the fight. And he goes, mm -hmm. I'm, I want to fight again. Let's go. I want to fight in my hometown. And then he gets to call and I said, I'm ready, man. I, I, I you know, I, it's, it's, it's done. Well, I, I'm more confident now. You know what I mean? And there was there was out. there was some talk of either Tim Kennedy or Gagard Musasi fighting Anderson on this card. Um, was there ever, to your knowledge? I mean, obviously, you know, Ed Suarez, his manager, handles right. the, the at Black House handles that that whole mess. But to your knowledge, was there any were there choices that Anderson were given, and Anderson chose Uriah Hall, or was the only choice that you knew of was Uriah Hall, and that was it? Well, actually, uh, Tim Kennedy was the first one, and it was just up in the air, mm -hmm. um, um, and then. We heard that he was gonna not fight on 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 that Kuduchiba fight, mm -hmm. and he was gonna fight in Vegas for UFC um, two hundred. Yeah, and then uh, and then in the mix of all that craziness, the Ray Hall name came in, and it was confirmed. So I'm like, okay, so now because he wanted to fight in his hometown, of course, it's right? Brazil, Kuduchiba, especially, you know. Of, of the three names I just mentioned, Gagard Musashi, Tim Kennedy, and, of course, Uriah Hall, to me, Uriah Hall is the best matchup. At this stage right now, for Anderson, Uriah Hall is the best matchup. It's a, it, it, it gives for a, a great fight, a striker's fight. It's definitely a striker's fight. I think this is for Anderson. 
his he, I mean, he, when he, he wants to close the chapter in his career mm -hmm. and finish right, this is the fight that he needs to actually step up and 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 okay. prove that you know that he can step up again. You know what I mean? That he's got the ability. He's got the game. Right. Um, right. It, so, which he does. I am a, I, I, not just because he's my friend or his coach. I, I you know, I was a fan before I was. Um, yeah. um, we all were. Coach, so. Even even the haters were fans. They just didn't know it. I mean, everyone was right. even. And I and mind you, I, I, I've said this before. When he got, when Anderson got, and I tell you, hold on, I think I have his record here. I'll pull up his record. He got uh, um, heel hooked, flying scissor heel hooked by. Rio Chonin and Pride Shockwave 2004. Mm. That was the, the uh, uh, New Year's Eve card. I said mm. then that Anderson was a great fighter, but he's a great instructor. He should probably retire at this point and, and go on to something else. And I thought back in 2004, he pretty much was done and came right. back through and became the greatest of all time in, in that process. So who, and who, UFC, right. It's like, obviously, I have, no, not, not just, not just the greatest of all time in the UFC, arguably the greatest Period, of all time. Right, with him and, to me, it's him and Fedor in that battle for greatest of all time. Right. One was Pride, one was UFC. But it's and, and after coming from a fight, where I'm like, look, he just doesn't have it anymore. It's time for him to go away. You, you know what I'm saying? And now all of a sudden, right. he's like, now we're talking about can he get back to being one of the best guys ever again? Like, is that possible for him to get up there? You're saying yes. Does he need to knock out? Uriah Hall. Does he need to finish Uriah Hall to prove to all of us that hey, yeah, he's he's on the right track to coming back? Um, I would say this: if if what Anderson needs to come back, and I told him before he left to Brazil, I said, man, you got to come back to that day that you got the the first the belt, the first mm -hmm. belt, man. Got to come back to that mentality, man. And I, I I'll, I'll guarantee you, if you come back to that mentality, your body's good, your heart's good, everything's coming back into place. The ring rust is, it's out. He goes, you will win that fight, yeah. Whichever way you choose to 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 win it, because that Anderson is was, he is that it was that guy that that was able to win the fight however he chooses to win the fight, you know, because he he was just that guy, you know. Yeah, and he he had so many so many ways. Obviously, the the biggest one was you watch him against Chael Son and gets beat for five, you know, essentially four rounds in, in three quarters, and comes back at the end and locks in a triangle lock because he has the ground game, he's got the skill, uh, and, and right. that is definitely a comeback, you know, a come from behind kind of championship fight because it's really a championship mentality that does that. Most people in that yeah. position are like, hey, I'm just trying to survive at this point. I've already lost. And he's still trying to look for a way to, to finish the fight. Exactly. And that's what I told him. You have to come back to that mentality of, you know, when you first got that call to, to win that, 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 that first uh, UFC belt, you had the, you know, that, that, that champion's heart. You got to come back to that. And he goes, I'm, I'm, I'm in. And he goes, I'm, I'm back there and more. He goes, it's just all that I've been through is make me so much hungry. You know what I mean? Wow, good, good for you guys. I'm glad that uh, Anderson's on the right track. Um, I, I got to be honest, man. I, I love the fight with Bisbing. I thought it was a great matchup when it was called in. Um, I thought it was going to be exciting, I, but I didn't pick it to go the way it went. You know, I thought that, right, that right. Anderson was going to be able to win it, and then Bisbing proved that he's still salty. And even though that that he said that you know Anderson is like a guy he looked up to, and 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 he's really you know really looking looking forward to this fight, that he still put it aside. It's like it's time to do battle and. Came out and did battle. So you got to respect Mike in that sense too. Like he was oh, yeah. do battle. So, hundred percent. Um, Marco, thanks so much for coming on here, man. I appreciate it. Uh, you're still doing some stunt work uh, before you can take off for Brazil uh, here for the next couple of weeks. What what the project? Can you tell us what project you're working on right now, or, is, or do you have an idea? Um, I'm I'm doubling uh, Luis Guzman. Hmm. Okay. On a, on a movie with Charlie Sheen and and uh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg called 911, and it's has to do with 9-11 and that's all I could say. How is how is Charlie looking right now? Like he obviously he's come he's out good, with good man. He's working. He's doing good. He's got he's, he's got to work, man. He's got AIDS bills now. He's got he's got to pay that medicine. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah he's got to pay, man. But he's going <laughs> to work a lot. But he's a good actor, you know? Yeah, when he when he's on, when he's on, he's definitely on. Like I mean, there's a reason why uh, Two and a Half Men did so well when he was on is because you right, know, he's right, right. good. He's so, on, he's on, man. Uh, do you have any time to interact with Whoopi Goldberg? No, actually, well, for our stuff, you know, mm -hmm. she hasn't been around. You haven't seen her around. Okay. I was just no. wondering how she is in person. She seems like she'd be somebody that I would like in person, but you never know until you actually meet them. So. Right, right, right. Definitely. All right, Marco, man. I really appreciate you coming on here. Thanks so much for taking the time with us. Uh, good luck in the rest of your uh, stunt work, and have fun down in Brazil when you get down there. Thanks, Frank. Appreciate it, brother.